we are going to be reviewing the latest episode in the Ark Knights TV anime, Perish in Frost, friendos. I'm just gonna state it right now. Perish in Frost, episode 10, without a doubt, the best episode in the Ark Knights anime yet. Without a doubt. This episode had everything. It absolutely did the beginning of the Frost Nova arc justice. If this is just episode 2 of 8, I can't wait to see what the later episodes are like because if you play the game, you would know exactly where this is leading to and just from the animation alone from this episode, I can't wait for the bigger fights to happen. The anime definitely elevated what was in the initial game to begin with. Yeah, I think we can move on to our spoilery segment now. I already said my piece about how I loved this episode in general, so because of the TV anime, if you're an anime only and you've only been following Ark Knight's story through the anime and you don't play the game, it was actually very intense seeing Frost Nova and Frostleaf face to face because you don't have that prior knowledge of knowing that Frostleaf is a playable character and if you play the game and you're going through that part in the Frost Nova arc, you know that Frostleaf is gonna come out just fine because she's a gacha game character. A good rule of thumb in gacha games is that they won't dare to ever kill their playable characters. It is what it is. But if you're just an anime only, they really did a great job of selling how desperate that fight looked. And this is definitely the point where people are evangelizing the anime towards non-game players. Like, this is a part of a story where everyone's like, please stick with the Ark Knights anime until the Frost Nova arc. We promise you, it becomes Kino once the Frost Nova arc starts. And I've seen the discussion on our anime and on the Ark Knights subreddit, and people have been enjoying it. Anime onlys have been enjoying it. The beginning of the episode was we initially got the sparks flying between both Mephisto and Frost Nova. Frost Nova's VA, she absolutely killed it. You could definitely sense that every single person that can hold their own against Mephisto, because Mephisto, if you let him just go and yap throughout the episode, he'll just steal the screen. But Frost Nova, she shot verbal knives against Mephisto. That was fun. So Mephisto and Frost Nova, we got sparks flying between them with Amiya and Frostleaf caught in between. Mephisto confirming to the anime onlys that yes, they burnt the corpses of a bunch of Chernobogian nobles that fled Chernobog when the reunion invasion happened. And after their first confrontation, they did manage to escape. He had a bit of quiet time to address Jessica and her panic attacks. We once again had a glimpse of Amiya's true power. Because not to be spoilery for future chapters in Ark Knights, at this point of the story, we've seen that Amiya has a pseudo-empathetic power that's connected to her. So what Amiya did was she took all of the pain that Jessica was feeling at that moment when she was shook by all the things that Frost Nova did. And impressively, Amiya took on every single one of Jessica's psychological troubles and she didn't even flinch. That's a tiny thing that if you blink and you miss it, it explains a lot about Amiya's current character right now. So they had that for a quiet downtime before the real fight happened. In order to escape the area where Frost Nova and Mephisto were in, they had to cross a huge strode and there was basically no cover for them. So they were trying to run through. Frost Nova found them and entrapped them from both sides. Aside from her entrance, we're seeing that, wow, she is incredibly dangerous. Yeti Squadron living up to the legend of a legendary band of infected reunion members that are ruthless, that have a bond as strong as family, and don't leave each other behind. The anime elevated what was in the original material and made it better. It made it its own because we saw, we definitely saw, Frostleaf was the MVP of this episode. I didn't expect it to go so hard because Frostleaf's powers are similar to Frost Nova in that she has ice-based arts powers. It's not that obvious that she's a four-star, but she's actually a combat veteran. She was a soldier for the Junior Colombian Army until her squad got wiped out and she joined Rhodes Island after that. She is one of the most experienced in combat in all of Rhodes Island. So Frostly finally getting to shine in anime format was a real treat. Rhodes Island was definitely on the back foot and Frostleaf was trying to buy them time. She tried to do the classic, I'ma sacrifice myself and buy you time and then it happened. Frost Nova did her arts incantation. She sang a Japanese cover of Lullaby and then she started generating her black ice. Giving a tease of Black Ice Frost Nova this early on really set the stakes of Frost Nova is one of the most dangerous enemies that Rose Island has faced yet. 
we also got a glimpse of Amiya defending against the Black Ice using her skill too, Spirit Burst. We got a glimpse of Spirit Burst. Amiya was definitely on the back foot fighting Frost Nova off until Frostleaf came in using her own ice powers. And aside from that, Frost Nova's Aripathy started acting up. With those two things combined, it finally gave Rose Island an opportunity to go save Frostleaf because no one was going to be left behind after what happened with Misha. No one was gonna be left behind ever again. Ami was not gonna let that happen. They were gonna stick by Frostleaf to the end and they skedaddled on out of there. Also, Doctor actually contrib contributed something. I almost forgot. I didn't really fully understand what Doctor did in the anime. He pointed the characters to shoot at the buildings like, I think he knew that there were Originium spots there, and that's where Frost Nova was gathering the energy to summon all of her icicles. Doctor contributed something, I didn't fully understand it, but it helped out. Everyone got away in the end. Amiya was definitely shook when Frost Nova told her that she had the eyes of a warrior. Badokasti came by to check on Frost Nova. Honestly, I expected Badokasti to have a more mechanical sounding voice. It could have had more texture, but whatever, it's not, it's not that big of a nitpick. I don't mind it too much. But then, they got communications back from Chen. We sort of forgot that Chen came with them to this district of Trinabog. We ended off this episode with a sight of Lungmen burning in the distance. Chen's not gonna pick them up because she needs to return to Lungmen and figure shit out because the pathway to Lungmen has finally been cleared. Reunion is now invading Lungmen. The real shit is about to start. This was just a big distraction to sneak by Chen to lure out the LGD. So yeah, Lungman is in danger, they have to face whatever trials await them because we got a glimpse of Tallulah and her broadsword. Good episode, great episode, without a doubt the best Arknights episode that we've gotten so far. Impressive to say that of episode 10, what is potentially, when will this end? 16, episode 16, if we're lowballing it like 8 episodes last season. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. Great episode. S tier music. I forgot to say this last episode, but the music in Arknight Season 2. S tier. The color grading and the cinematography was once again S tier. So Yuki Watanabe definitely showing his props as a director now that it definitely seems like Season 2 has a bigger budget and we're going all in to making this a stellar adaptation of the Frost Nova arc. I really like this episode. It was almost perfect. I don't know what could have elevated it even more. But the fact that it it elevated the source material even better than what was inside the actual game. I think it got props from me for that. Anyway, that should be our review of Parish and Frost, episode 10. Very good.